Some of you may recognize this guy from the previous video basic concept number 5, but I added some textures to this character to give him a bit more life. In the beginning part of this video, you won't see the textures because it was recorded before my texturing. If you've already seen the previous video, feel free to skip and jump straight into the feet stomping animation. That's something extra I added to this video that the other one didn't have. I'm going to make the Stegosaurus stomp his feet combined with the keyframed tail wagging animation. This will make use of techniques throughout all basic concept videos up until now. I'll be introducing a new node named Secondary Motion, which is a KineFX node that helps create more natural looking animations. Basic concept number 5B, Animation Workflow. Let's start by selecting the IK controls for this rigged character. So I'm going to throw down a blast node, just like how we always do it with the usual setup. So in the blast node, I'm going to choose delete non selected and I'm going to use the points. So let's click this. I want to turn the points a little um, larger so we can actually see them. That's a little bit more clear. Now I'm going to select the tail the last point on the tail, and that's going to be my IK control. Press enter, so that's selected in here. Next, I'm going to throw down a full body IK node. Set this all up. I'm going to hook the capture pose into the first input of the full body IK, which is our, our target. And then the IK controls, which is this. So I'm going to just label this. That's going to go in the second input of the full body IK. Now let's hook this up to the joint to form. Throw down a rig pose node. Now let's come over here and just start manipulating our IK controls. Nothing happens. Why is that? That's because I forgot to enable the map using parameter in the full body IK node. So this needs to be switched over to match by attribute name because we're reusing the original skeleton as our IK controls, which has the same naming format. By switching this over, we can avoid manually doing bone remapping. So instantly you see this is updated. So let's give this a try. Select the rig pose node, come over here, and let's wiggle this tail around. Okay, the entire skeleton moves. So what's the next thing I forgot? I need some anchor point to pin this guy down. So the feet and the head, I'm thinking, should stay put. So let's add some anchor points. I'm just gonna reuse this blast node. So I'm just gonna copy this, but I'm gonna call it anchor points. Now I'm gonna come over here. This I'm not gonna be using the tail as the anchor point. So I'm gonna have to reselect my anchor points. I'm gonna select new points. I want the two feet and the head, okay? After I have all those points selected, press enter. So those are gonna be my anchor points. Now I'm gonna merge the rig pose node and the anchor points merge that together and throw that into the source skeleton, which is the second input of the full body IK. Now that's gonna hold it down. The entire skeleton is not moving now, only the tail. So that's a lot better. Now let's test this. Select the rig pose node, come over here and let's wiggle this around, which works pretty well. However, the feet are somewhat moving there, that really shows now. So we need to add some priority to the feet so it stays put on the ground. So let's come over here to full body IK, to the configuration, expand that, then press this little plus button to add a configuration so we can add priority to those anchor points. Next, I want to choose the anchor points. So I wanna choose four feet, the front and back, and the head. Press enter, so that's all entered in. Next, I wanna add a priority value to this. So this will be set to one, which is the highest priority since this is the only configuration I have. Test this again. And so instantly you see that the feet are on the ground right here. So the ground level is, I'm just gonna move this around. Okay, you can see that the feet are not moving. They're stationary, they're fixed in place, which is perfect. So one thing we want to do is reset our changes to uh, that we've done in testing in the break pose node by clicking this clear over here. Yeah, that should clear and undo all the changes we've made to this character so far. Okay, now we can actually start animating this. So what I want to show you what happens when we rotate the tip of this tail. So I'm gonna select this tail and I'm just gonna rotate it. So no translation, just rotating. Let me zoom in. You can see that the entire tail moves. Let's do the same thing, but I'm gonna use just a rig pose node without this full body IK. Drag this to the left. I'm just gonna use a, a normal plain rig pose node. And we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna take the tip 
of this the tail and I'm going to rotate it nothing actually happens well it's at the end of it so when we're just using this without the IKs we can't do it like this so let's try a different one let's clear that let's try and so you can see this is very tedious this is a lot of work instead of what we did before with the IK controls I was only manipulating one point this I have to like update every single point in order to get that sort of the same curve so this is one of the advantages of using the rotation inheritance inside the IK node. Huge advantage. So we don't want that. Let's take that out. Bring what we had, what we were doing back in. Enable that back in. Hook this back up. Okay, let's come back to the rig post node. Over here, select the rig post node. For the rotations, inheritance. Yes, it's inheriting the rotations all the way up to the parent all the way up the tail but it's not translating it so you can see it, it's staying in position so if i wanted this tail to swing back and forth this is not going to look the way that i expected it you're going to have to add some translation to this as well let's try and do a very simple keyframe so in the next video we're going to go in more into procedural animation and that's where i'm going to go into sine waves but just for this one i'm just going to show you a very simple keyframe that we can do with this nothing fancy so i'm going to take this rotate it like this and I'm going to set a keyframe the timeline to let's say 24 I'm going to move this over here rotate it back okay let's keyframe this okay let's see what this looks like this so it looks okay at the top but if we look closely it's kind of scrunching in the middle frame 13 is sort of like the midway point frame 12 would be the uh, midway point the exact middle and that's where we want everything, the tail to be resting position, the zero. So we want to zero all these out, the translation and the rotation. Let's just go zero, zero, zero. And let's add a keyframe to this. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. This swings here. Okay, this is starting to look like what I want. Swings over, swings over. So that looks pretty good. Once we have this set up, we can just copy these keyframes to have it the tail to swing back. So let's take frame 12, copy this, right click, copy. And I'm going to go in the middle of here, should be 36. Right click, paste. And then I'm going to take the first frame, right click, copy. And I'm going to go over to frame 48, right click, paste. So this is a simple tail swinging left to right. A cheap trick we can do to make the timeline loop within this is just set the end frame to be 48. So the total number of frames to be 48. This way the, the viewport would just loop back and forth. Now, as I mentioned before, later on, we're going to use sine waves to do this. So we don't have to use these cheap tricks like this anymore. But for now, let's keep it simple. So this is a simple way where you can use what we've learned in this video, the rotation inheritance to make a tail wag or tw tail swing back and forth. After recording the first half of this video, I added textures to my stegosaurus. So the demonstration starting from now on will feature the dinosaur with textures. In Houdini, we can switch the character mesh very easily without losing any of our existing work, which is something I've shown in basic concept number three, priority. As long as the bone names are exactly the same, our poses and animations will survive. So let's come over here, and I'm going to switch the character over. So this is the version of the Stegosaurus with textures that was added after I recorded the first half of the video. So the later half of this video will have feature the dinosaur with textures. Now, in order to do that stomping animation, we want to raise the first two front legs of the dinosaur. So let's set up our IKs for the next phase. As we've learned from previous basic concepts that we can layer the full body IK. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Grab a blast node. Delete non-selected, choose my points, and I'm going to choose one of the front legs. So I'm going to start off with this one. Press enter. I'm going to drop down another full body IK. I'm going to drop down a rig pose node. I'm going to select the rig pose node, come over here, and let's see what we can do with this. Oh, 
Now, again, you'll need to come over to the full body IK, uh, switch the mapping you map using mapping attribute in order to match by attribute name. This way it'll recognize the existing bone names that we're reusing in our IK controls. So let's go back to that rig pose node. Now we can control the dinosaur, but it's since we don't have any anchor points, that one IK control is moving the entire skeleton. So let's drop a few IKs. I want the back legs to stay put. I'm going to use make the back two legs anchor points. So I'm going to just reuse this blast node. So instead of choosing the front leg, I'm going to choose the two back legs. So select this, press enter, merge this all together. We can freely control the front leg. There we go. I want to show you a trick how I'm going to mirror the right leg motion to the left front leg so that that way we don't have to animate both legs and do twice the work since the motion is going to be very similar the two front legs are going to move almost I identical it's going to label this this is the right leg you're going to move this out of the way I'm just going to copy these two nodes over but instead of having the right leg here i want to choose the left leg so come over here choose this guy Everything will be uh, part of the IK control. So let's hook this to the merge, connect this to the merge. Now this, you're going to get a warning on this rig pose node. That's because the names don't match. We don't have, and this is not incorrect. So let me update this left leg. So we don't have the right leg connected to this anymore. So this is not being recognized. So let's clear this and let's actually reselect our left leg. So that warning will go away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the motion from the right leg over here in the rig pose node, and I'm going to copy the translation, right click, copy parameter, come over here to the other rig pose node, and I'm going to come over to the translation, right click and paste relative references. This way, wherever the right leg goes, the left leg will follow. I'm going to do the same thing for the rotation as well. So right click, copy parameter, come over to the second, uh, the other rig pose node, right click, paste relative references. So this way, the left leg IK control will mirror the right leg IK control. So let's test this out. Okay, that looks fine. Let's add some keyframes to the rig pose node that's connected to the right leg in order to create that stomp animation. Go back to frame one on the timeline, select the rig pose node that's connected to the right leg, and I want to zero out the changes that I did for testing this right here. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to click this clear button over here in order to start fresh. Now I'm going to reselect that IK bone. And whenever you do that, you need to select another node, select the other rig pose node and then select it back in order to get the viewport to update because as you can see the mirroring motion had to snap back so let's put a keyframe on frame one so we want the frame one starts off with in the resting position so we want the all the zeros in place and put a keyframe for the translation and rotation because I want everything in the resting position on frame one. The next thing is I want the stomp motion to have both the front legs rise up. The legs will rise up quite slowly compared to when the, the legs are lowered down, the stomp. So I want the stomp to be like a little faster when it comes down. So on frame 24, so that's like one second, I'm going to raise the front legs, say around here. And then I'm going to put a keyframe on frame 24 for the translation and rotation. Now I want the front legs to come down quite a lot faster. So on frame 36, which is like half a second, it will come back to the resting position. So we can just zero these out and then put a keyframe on the translation and rotation once again. Now let's play this. So there is quite a few things that I want to improve on this. I want to make an overshoot on frame 33, which is just a couple frames back from 36. So 30, frame 36 is when the feet are landing back down. So if I go to frame 36, go back a couple frames onto say frame 33, I want this to overshoot a bit in order to really sell the stomp, to make it really look like there's the stegosaurus is actually putting force into the ground, it's so stomping on the ground. And I'm gonna lower this just a bit to, so that it goes through the ground. And I'm gonna put a keyframe on the translation and rotation once again on frame 33, the overshoot frame. So let's play this. replay this back on the right view so we can have a better look at this. 
And I wanted to overshoot just a bit more to really sell the look. So let's go on to frame 33. Let's move this a little lower. Okay, let's try that. Since there's already a keyframe on frame 33, we can just update the position of that IK. So the translation and rotation parameters are just updated automatically. I think that sells it a bit more. Let's go back to perspective mode. Now there is an issue I want you to see. Let's go back to the right side. And you can see that the hind legs are actually floating. When the front legs are rising up or lifting up, the hind legs are actually floating into the air slowly. And that's not what we want. We want the hind legs to stay anchored down. So we already have these anchor points that's anchoring down the hind legs. However, it's not enough. So that's where priority comes in. And we have to, we need um, to add a priority value to the anchor points. If we look closer, we actually do have priority set for the hind legs. Why is the priority not enough to anchor down the hind legs? I find that whenever you ha you're layering full body IKs, sometimes you need to fiddle around with this priority value. Sometimes one may not be enough, even though this is the only priority we have set in this full body IK node. If I increase this priority value to two or three, let's play this back. So you can see that the hind legs are staying put. There's actually something that else is going on. The front legs are dimmed down. And let's, in order to illustrate that, let me play this again. So let me change the priority back to one. So you can see that the front feet goes past uh, one. So this is one square uh, Houdini units and it's going past it. Now let's change this priority to two. Okay, so that that really dampers, uh, dampers it down. So let's change this to two. Okay, so anything above that really dampers down the effect. But our feet are staying put. So what we can try to do is uh, let's select that front legs again and go back to, let's go to frame 24 and that's where the front legs are actually rising up. So let's come here and let's try and tweak this and see what happens. Let's go back to frame uh, that one and pass that one mark. Now let's play this back. Okay, so the hind legs are staying put. So this is something I find that um, when you're layering full body IK, even though this priority value is one, it may not be enough. Even though it's the only priority here, it means it's the largest. When in doubt, if something weird comes happens and your anchor points are not being anchored down solidly, try increasing the priority values. Now that we have that solved, I ended up adding too much enhancements to the stomping animation and the video ended up being too long than expected. And so I ended up splitting this animation setup into two videos. I really do hope it ends at two videos. Trust me, editing isn't fun at all. In the next video, we'll cover the knee bending, neck bending, and secondary motion node to help make this animation look more natural. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.